Well, I'm here with Val from Atomic, and we are going to go over some pretty broad ranging topics in terms of products uh, that you all have coming out next season. But we're going to start with this very nice looking lineup of skis right behind us. Can you tell us a bit about what's new, uh, what's going on with the Bent series of skis? Sure. Yeah, of course. Love to. So as you may have heard, um, Chris Ben Chetler was named creative director of Atomic this past year. Um, so full force on board now with us. And truthfully, he um, he's done a fabulous job from introducing the 120 to the 100 and then now the full family. So what you're getting here is really just all new graphic updates. But what's awesome about these graphics is it's legitimately one canvas. So every one of these skis makes up the full entire picture. Hmm. Um, what's even better is for the first time globally, the number one ski is the Bent 100, which is hard to believe because it's never really been something over 85. Hmm. So, As in globally, like for Atomic? For Atomic. Okay, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that ski in particular is we've we've spent time on a few pairs now and it's just wildly versatile like yeah. you could you have i mean atomics park skiers are skiing it but then i know plenty of very directional skiers who will ski in the resort or, or they'll use it for a touring ski so that that doesn't necessarily surprise me having having spent some time on it yeah it's got a great size run it's i mean you can rip a, a real tight radius turn or again you can be um, more of an intermediate beginner to intermediate skier and still love the ski and have something to um, kind of grow into. So yeah, the Bent 100 has been great for us as well as, again, as you know now, globally, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah. So the, the Bent 100, maybe arguably the most versatile of the group, maybe just run us through model by model, which, what type of skier is each of these for? Sure. So I don't have the 85 here, but the 85 will be more of that park skier sort of took place of punks that mm -hmm. used to be in our line. Um, so that would be that new option for uh, more of a full twin. Mm -hmm. And then we jump into the 90, which you also probably saw in the Olympics last year, but not this graphic mm -hmm. per se. Um, so big air for sure, or even um, more of that beginner skier that wants a softer option from that 100, a little narrower waist width being the 90, um, so easier to turn. And then you jump into that 100, which as we said, the most versatile um, option. Um, and if you want a little wider, you jump into the Bent 110, which has done awesome for us this year. It's taken a little bit of numbers from the 120, but I think it's just because it doesn't have to be that true powder ski. Like I skied on groomers as well. Um, but similar rocker profile to that 120, a little more advanced ski. And we actually brought that down to a size 164 oh, cool. for next year. So we can truly get um, the female skiers or even if, if you happen to be shorter and want a shorter length, um, you have that option now. And then again, that true powder ski being that 120. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, our founder, Jonathan, was just in Austria a few weeks ago as, mm -hmm. as of when we're filming this. And he's a very directional skier historically, but he happened to be there on a very good day apparently and yeah. got a lot of fresh snow. And he skied the 120 and he was just, just raving about it afterwards, which kind of surprised me. But that ski has had a, a storied history for sure. Yeah. I mean, going back, how long has Chris been with the brand? Is it over a decade now? Yeah, yeah. over a decade now. Um, but what's been great about him moving into creative director role, as well as still being an athlete, is he's utilizing all of our athletes to develop these skis. So it's not just based upon um, what he likes. He's really taking all their input. And that's, I think, why this family is performing mm -hmm. so well, because he's He's taking your park athlete um, as well as your free ride world tour athletes to get any feedback possible. Yeah, it's sweet. So we covered the Bent family. What else is going on with the Atomic Ski Collection? So very important for us is our all-mountain skis, Maverick and Maven. 
Um, although not much has changed besides graphically, and I think the graphics get better and better year after year. Um, so clearly they're listening. Um, an important thing to know is it's designed in North America, built in Austria to be skied everywhere. And that's a motto we're truly trying to follow. If you remember our Maverick skis from, um, let's see, last year now, mm. The trees were located right in the middle of the ski, and it kind of ruined the design as soon as you mounted it. It looked great, but again, that was feedback taken. So this year, the trees were moved up, and then again, graphically, um, we took some feedback, and for the future, you'll see some cool additional um, products coming out within Maverick and Maven. Um, but again, this is something that is needed on all mountain ski um, with a little more bulk to it than and a little less rocker versus what you're getting in the bent family. Um, so just a little tip rocker, a little tail rocker um, with either carbon or titanolin in the in the core as well. Gotcha. And in terms of width ranges, what 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 kind of range are we covering across the whole Maverick and Maven series? So we basically for for Maverick, it's eighty three to one hundred. So you'll have an eighty three, eighty six, eighty eight, ninety five, and one hundred. Um, your eighty eight to one hundred will have Titanol in it, and then eighty six and eighty three will have Carbon, um, and then your Ladies Mavens will be an eighty three. Um, 86 without carbon, 86 with carbon, and your 93 with carbon. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then how about the ski right next to those? So right next to you, um, closest to you, next to the Maverick ski, is our new Backland. Um, what's great is Atomic's really been focusing on sustainability. We don't want to just be greenwashing you. Um, so you'll see it throughout all of our product lines, whether it's why are there so many black boots on the wall? There's a reason for it. Um, not because we don't like color, but we want to try to add more recycled products, but with still um, allowing the proper functionality of the product. So what we have here is our first eco-friendly ski, which is focus in the Backland 88 as well as Backland SL family. Okay. And what are we doing it to make it more eco-friendlier? We are actually locally sourcing the poplar wood as well as reducing the fiberglass content by 60%. And you will see in the layup of the ski um, more of a th more thick areas as well as thin areas. So we're utilizing a bit more wood in certain areas or thicker portions of the wood in certain areas, um, and then thinning it out where necessary. So to still make it snappy, as skiable, and lightweight as we want it to be and function um, without, again, ruining that functionality of the product. Gotcha, interesting. And in terms of the Backland uh, series as a whole, that, I mean, I feel like of all this, the collections Atomic has, it covers a pretty wide range from like Schemo to yeah. the Backland 117. How would you, if you're talking to someone who's looking at that entire series, how would you kind of pick it apart in terms of end users? Sure. So Atomic, when developing touring products, really wants to focus strictly on touring, not just try to... Um, kind of get their feet wet in the touring family. Mm -hmm. So what we do have is quite a bit within this family. We'll have Backland UL, which is that super lightweight, more schemo. You, you'll get a 62, 65 underfoot. For people that really want to go uphill, less downhill functionality. Mm -hmm. um, and then Backland SL, which is our super light. So we go from ultra light to super light collection, um, a little bit more snappy, still very lightweight. And then what we pretty much started out with is our backland. Mm -hmm. So true backland skis, um, waist widths around that 88. And then as we jump into the free ride, more of that off-piste touring um, option like Sage mm -hmm. is a backland 117 skier. Um, so off-piste powder, so free ride option for gotcha. them as well. More downhill functionality. Still lightweight, mm -hmm. but less for that uphill only person. Yeah, makes sense. 
Well, yeah, the, the technology in the Backland 88 here is pretty exciting, and it's cool to see a push across all parts of the industry in that regard. We, uh, there's a, I think it was a Gear 30 episode, or a Blister podcast episode a few uh, weeks back where Jonathan talked about the, um, the plan that you guys released, um, kind of evaluating your own environmental impact. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just cool to see that sort of transparency becoming a bigger deal in the industry. Yeah. So we're not just trying to focus on making sustainable products, but in the process of making the sustainable products, like our factories, um, how to make them more carbon neutral as well. So by 2030, we plan to be carbon neutral as, as a family. Um, so Amher Sports in general will follow suit. But again, that, that starts in our factories. So can't just um, source products to make it more sustainable, but really in the development portion, try to focus there. Yeah, it's cool to see. So we just went over skis. There's also a lot going on on the boot side for Atomic. Can you run us through these ones first, which look a little different than a lot of other ski boots? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Um, so as many of you, many of you have heard, um, BOA has moved into the Alpine boot world. Um, for any existing um, brand that has already used BOA, so for Solomon Atomic, K2, Fisher, um, you will see BOA being utilized. Um, It's not the BOA you're familiar with on a snowboard boot. It is actually super burly. Um, As soon as you see the wire, the cable, you'll notice it's different. Um, It's all external. Um, And what's great is it actually um, micro adjusts. So you can actually tighten it, moving towards your toes. And then if you go a little bit too tight, you can turn it towards your ankle and it will back off. As opposed to the generic um, BOA where you have to fully pop it open if you over tighten. What is great about BOA is it um, provides a nice wrap of the foot. So as you tighten a normal Alpine boot, it actually um, crushes the top of the foot. Not to say that buckles are bad, Um, We still utilize a ton of buckles. We even have it on the top of these boots. Um, But it just provides a really nice wrap feature to over the the forefoot. Um, We are utilizing it in Ultra XTD. You'll see from other brands it being utilized elsewhere. But our Ultra XTD, if you recall, is a um, narrow last, so 98. Um, it, it, It has our touring feature. Um, so the free lock system in the back. So why are we utilizing it here? That's the main question we get asked because some people have it on wide boots. Some people have it on medium last boots. And they said, well, ultra, it's a narrow boot. Why would you start there? The best way, um, to produce BOA in its infancy is, Um, in a new mold. Mm -hmm. So this is the boot that received a new mold. That's why it's being placed here. Um, It wasn't strategically placed in Ultra XTD because we wanted it there. It's just the best way to start um, because of the new mold process. Um, What else is new in this boot? So we also have a new Skywalk sole, so a recycled sole, um, and we increased the width underfoot So we were noticing that a lot of snowmobiling um, or just certain kind of climbing capabilities were actually like ruining the bottom of your boot. So with the increase right underfoot, right under the arch um, of rubber, it actually helps to protect that from happening. We also changed this boot from PA material to PU. people were often like, well, why'd you do that? It made the weight of the boot a little bit heavier. Well, we figured there's a good reason, and you'll see coming up, um, why compromising the weight and making it a little bit heavier is worthwhile. Um, But if you are familiar with our Prime XTD, that does have PA material already. And we were noticing that that boot, or sorry, PU material already, um, that boot, was not getting any chewed up toes and heels. 
the downhill performance was significantly better, um, but obviously it added a little weight. So by doing that, you will see um, the toes and heels upholding much better. Um, so bindings won't chew it up anymore. And again, it'll feel much nicer going downhill, a lot more performance. Um, we also beefed up the free lock system on the, the back of the boot. Um, you'll notice a significant difference. It's much bigger, mm -hmm. um, but in a good way. And we are also providing an aftermarket part called the Narbar. I've heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but so, I just heard the name. Yeah. So um, we had a lot of pro athletes that um, don't really tour much in these boots, but might need it for a little bit hike uh, of a hike. So they'll snowmobile up most of the way and then need the tech components for a little ways, yeah. but want the full performance of an Alpine boot. And what the Narbar does is if you remove the free lock completely and screw in the Narbar, it it creates basically a locked in Alpine boot. So gotcha. you won't have that tiny bit of motion um, that you will get in the with the free lock. Um, and you'll also notice um, PVC material, free materials in our um, in our power straps as well. There's also some liner updates. Um, so again, a lot going on in yeah. this boot. So we are utilizing the 3D stretch toe box that we introduced with Prime um, as well as Magna this current year. And we will have a new um, flex zone in the back of the boot um, or in the back of the liner. So allows for a much nicer touring experience when you do decide to tour with it. Gotcha. So in terms of the general demographic, I mean, like the Hawks XTD series has always been like stiff touring capable boots with all the changes. Does the ideal demographic change much at all? Or is it still kind of suiting those same people, but just with different performance benefits now? I think it's still suiting the same people um, because this person, the person that was using this boot me being one of them, maybe didn't tour that much, but wanted the full performance of an Alpine boot. So that's why this functioned better um, versus other options. But um, we will have BOA, and I did forget to mention this, on two models each for women and men. And we, you will still see buckle versions as well, because like I said, um, people still like buckles. Uh, they still, they work great. Um, they're on pretty much every other model. If BOA was fully the way to go, we would have just completely changed everything. But buckles are still a good thing. And you will see the option for buckle and BOA in this family. Cool. Um, anything else you want to touch on about this one? Um, one other good thing to note is people see this. It's not small. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. we do have a nice little um, guard system right in front of the BOA, but it is meant to release if it needs to release. And it does have a little tooth system underneath. So if it does happen and where it most likely will happen is the people walking sideways down the stairs. Mm -hmm. um, it's an easy clip back in system. Um, I think the only other person that told me they managed to knock it off a bit was Darren Rolves, <laughs> which Darren is hiking in in crazy areas. And he said when he knocked it off, it was on maybe like a tree stump or a branch that he didn't see that uh -huh. was covered. So he's been skiing in it quite a bit. And this is the boot he uses. So it's not a deterrence by any means. It's, it's actually a good functionality of the product. Um, but yeah, just so you know, that's an option. You still can fully memory fit this boot. Mm -hmm. um, memory fit capabilities are still 100% there, the same. There's no difference. And it's really easy to work on it, especially since it's external. Mm -hmm. And that being said, people always wonder about warranty issues with BOA. It has BOA's lifetime warranty, um, and all of, our, all of the brands will still carry that through so it's a good new option once you get your yeah. foot in it you'll be pleasantly surprised yeah that's the thing i feel like people really need to get their foot in a boa boot to understand the difference um because yeah it is it's very noticeable yeah <laughs>
So moving on from the Hawks Ultra XTD, there's a whole new family of boots. Can you tell us about the Backland XTDs? Sure. So since Ultra XTD gained a little weight, um, we wanted something to fill in that had the capability of our regular Backland family boots and Backland SL, Backland UL boots. Um, but with better skiability, that same lightweight capability, great touring capability, but better skiability downhill performance wise. Um, and so we created Backland XTD. So to better describe it, um, just from looking at it, you can tell it looks a little different. It has a cross lace system on the, um, the shell of the boot and then a single buckle on the, the cuff but it does have a taller upper cuff from our regular backland boot. Um, it's actually a prime last, which all of our backlands are generally narrow and most boots in this family are narrow lasted boots, whereas this will be that 100 last boot at a 26.5. Um, also looking at it, a regular backland boot generally has an open throat whereas an alpine boot is an overlap. Um, so they kind of mesh the two here. Um, so you have a partial overlap um, in the, the shell of this boot. So right here in the front, um, you have a updated stretch guard, um, waterproofing stretch guard that works fabulously. I can attest to it. Um, and they also changed the pivot points. So we have written on our boots frictionless pivot mm -hmm. um, for backland. We have 70 degree of motion. That's way more than your, your ankle, your foot can generally do. Um, but the, um, the way Matt works, Matt Manser works, is he finds any little um, thing to tweak. And he found a little bit of friction in our backland boot. And it is now eliminated. And how did he do it? They actually move the pivot points to be um, parallel and symmetrical. So normally on a regular boot, they're not parallel and they're asymmetrical. You'll see the inner ankle being a little bit forward or higher in the boot, um, depending on the brand. And here you'll see that from them being parallel and symmetrical, the range of motion of this boot is unheard of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it almost gets annoying to watch people put it on just because what the first thing they do is just rock back and forth with their foot and you're like, all right, enough. I know it, I know it moves well. <laughs> so touring capability, it has literally the best touring capabilities of, I think, our Backland family in general now. Gotcha. And then in terms of um, flex ratings, what are we working with in the Backland XDD family? Yeah, so normally we didn't have flex numbers mm -hmm. on these boots, um, but now we have a, two carbon 120s and Y2 um, because we are also providing different soles for this boot. So you can either buy these boots with touring soles mm -hmm. or grip walk soles. And people would be like, well, why do I want a grip walk sole? Well, for those um, ski patrollers, maybe race coaches, um, people that generally stay on piste want to be able to use one boot for maybe a couple different skis, but still have the touring capabilities, the, the tech capabilities. Um, they might want that grip walk sole. Whereas someone that wants this strictly for touring, um, they will buy that, that touring sole. And just to see the difference, you can see this is your grip walk. And this is your touring. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more traction on the touring sole, um, a little more weight added to the grip walk sole, mm -hmm. but hardly any not noticeable feel. Yeah, yeah, it is. A, as far as grip walk soles go, it's still mostly rubber mm -hmm. and quite low profile compared yes. to like a, an alpine boot. Correct. Um, so we'll have two options of each sole um, for both men's and ladies. Um, this would be one of your ladies touring top model options being that 115. So they will cap out at flexes 120 and 115. 
um, and then go down from there. So in terms of the internal of the boot, um, anything you want to touch on it for the liner of the Backlon XDDs? So updated liners, um, they are memory fit as well, and they are breathable, uh, and you can hand wash them mm -hmm. if needed. Um, and then they do accept the new Freelock 4.5 that we have on the Ultra XCD, um, so that beefier Freelock. Um, so that being said, you could put the Narbar on here, <laughs> but I don't think you would want to for yeah. this boot. Um, but it's that same exact system. Got it. Cool. Well, thank you so much for running us through all of those products. And yeah, we're very much looking forward to spending time on them this week. Sweet. Cool. Sounds good. Thank, thank you. you.